Welcome home, Bitcoin truth seekers. It is one of those days. It is Thursday, March 2nd, 956 a.m. here in the Arizona desert. And the market is kind of eh. I mean, uh, let's take a look at what's going on today. You know, there's an incredible cold front and a lot of snowy weather coming down from the north. It's even frigid and uh, darn near hailing here in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Um, it's unseasonably, strangely, biblically gray out there. And north of us in Prescott, they got like 14 inches of snow in the last 48 hours or something like that, which is not impossible, but definitely uncommon. So, well, here we are, uh, biblical weather. Uh, biblically crappy market. Let's check out what's going on. So BitcoinTeleView.com. Got more for you there. Check it out. All right. Looking at the crypto universe in squares. Basically, it's one great big red square with a few little, uh, you know, specks of green. EOS is green today. I kind of like that. And T is green also. GMT. You know, let's actually check out um, GMT. Greenwich Mean Time. I'm sure that's not what it really stands for. But uh, EOS is looking good. Frax, Frax, sure. Uh, Frax is kind of cool. Um, and what else? Anything else? Anyway, uh, we're seeing a few, a few green things in the market. So in this vast sea of red today, oh, and T. Let's see what's going on with T. T was looking good yesterday, kind of had some potential. So looking at FinViz, um, the market this morning started with a real push in the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P 500. But Boom, kind of gave a lot of it back. Not really too exciting overall today there. Um, Tesla, let me refresh this right here. Tesla, for whatever reason, down 6.45%. Amazon down 1.76. Uh, you know, the financial uh, uh, banks diversified. Interesting. Uh, JP Morgan down 1.5. Bank of America Corporation down uh, 2.8. Basically, if we wind it, if we round that up, Wells Fargo down 2. And uh, Citicorp down uh, 1.8. What is going on with that? That's wild. I don't know why that's happening. Um, diagnostic, well, healthcare diagnostic research. They're kind of doing pretty good today. But anyway, uh, Amazon and Tesla. Tesla definitely looks like the great big loser of the day so far, unfortunately. Uh, Salesforce, a forgotten company with an empty building there in San Francisco. <laughs> uh, technology software application uh, 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 section here, the S&P 500. Um, really, uh, Salesforce up 11.63% today. What in the crap for? Interesting. You know, um, while we rock through this, if we could, just for the fun of it, not that I want to, you know, bore y'all, but just for real, why in the crap is Salesforce? What is the news? Um, but what is a stock pops on earnings beat? Okay, so the earnings were good today. Um, okay, cool. So they uh, their their earnings was coming good, I guess. Anyway, odd. So with that said, let's look at the uh, market stuff today. Uh, dollar strength index today definitely had a rejection off of a previous uh, high the other day, but basically, and yesterday was a red candle. Today is definitely a green candle, and the market certainly is showing that to be the case. Uh, oil continues creating its beautiful lower highs and cruising up. S and P 500. It's showing here as a green day, but I don't quite get how it's a green. Um, let me actually go to Finviz one more time here. Has something changed? S and P 500. Uh, .20. Um, doesn't look too too happening. Well, anyway, we'll keep rocking through this. Here it shows, you know, a green doji kind of candle there on the daily. Well, anyway. Overall, maybe it does a green candle on the daily. Here's the big deal. S&P 500 broke the 200, hit the 314, got rejected, back down to the 200. It's really, are we going to bounce or what? Um, definitely, even though the uh, dollar strength index is cranking today, it has not truly really pushed the S&P 500 below that daily 200 moving average. So definitely, if we could start a bounce here, that would be a glorious thing. Maybe we can send the uh, dollar strength index down to hell back where it belongs. <laughs> All right. And uh, Bitcoin versus uh, Tether, red day today. Uh, uh, looking at gold, red day. We can't quite make it happen. At least it's above the 314, kind of continuing that 314 moving average bounce on the daily chart. S uh, silver, it's just basically it tried to hit the 200 moving average um, and get some energons going, but basically it got uh, rejected so far. So silver, you know, kind of weak today. Looking at uh, uh, volume explicitly for Bitcoin last 24 hours, 7.5 billion. That's really dreadful volume for a uh, Thursday, for a weekday. 
looking at wrecks yesterday it was like 94 about billion in wrecks or something like that million i mean uh today it's 62 million so basically i am noticing that people are getting over trying to long and short the market so darn hard last 24 hours and that's kind of a good thing because um, people were like yesterday it was just sad to watch the liquidations why people try so hard with big leverage i just don't know um binance uh coming well okay let's, let's, let's look at all of them here basically um all the top 20 exchanges is it all of them yeah all the top 20 exchanges are in the red today um it's just not really happening for, uh so big exchanges the big players in the red today how about derivative that's at spot trading for spot trading pairs for uh, derivatives uh we're at uh, 36 billion it would make sense we're seeing less less wrecks uh adding up so people aren't trying to leverage as hardcore in this uncertain market um looking at the uh bitcoin in the top 100 bitcoin coming in at 23,275 that's very nice in general most of the top 100 are in the red i saw a couple green uh earlier like a terra luna classic definitely was pushing some green but uh, in general top 100 are pretty much uh getting wrecked unless maybe you're playing some of those against bitcoin then you may, you may have some green there looking at longs versus shorts with uh on binance long longs versus shorts on binance uh, for Bitcoin, coming in at 61% long, 38% short, there has been, even with our recent volatility, a long bias for Bitcoin on Binance, and I'll take it, sure. For Ethereum, 56% long, 43% uh, short, so basically just not a whole lot of uh, energons there for Ethereum. Looking at Bitcoin here on the four-hour chart, this is, I think, what's really the difficult moment today. I think I don't exactly understand why the market's kind of taking such a hit today. On crypto market, um, it could be just the dollar strength index pumping. S and P 500 in a in, in a pivotal spot. Is it going to keep that 200 or not? There might be other you know larger financial things going on that I'm just not aware of. I kind of don't pay attention to the uh, um, what the Fed's doing and things like that. I really should to a greater extent, but I usually hear about it and I don't know of anything happening today, but there's some news we'll look at real quick, which might be a reason that the market's having some, you know, weak volatility today. So here it is, Bitcoin versus USDT on the four hour chart. What I'm seeing here, which is a big deal, is four hour chart is riding this 10 moving average. That's the white moving average right there. 314 is way below it, the green one. Really, we're at kind of a make or break moment. You know, once again, are we going to hold this thing or what? You know, if we don't hold that, that four hour 200 moving average, that's just not incredibly spiffy. Although we do see a directional, we do see a, a squeeze indicator beginning to turn positive. This little red, um, I'm sorry, little white uh, uh, cross there, that means that it squeezes on. The bulls and the bears are fighting each other. Um, and uh, I would say so. Uh, looking at the directional index, it's in the red and ADX, is, it's gone south. It's pretty much, it, you know, it's not there. Uh, look at the uh, volume indicator here. Uh, volume, and this is this is this is cumulative volume of buys and sells. So it's not buy green, sell red. Um, you know, blue is basically no volume. Green is average. Yellow is increased, and red is Lambo by Lambo volume, which could be a culmination of both uh, buys and sells together. With that said, ultimately, just volume last good number of days is just ultimately if you look at it. It is slowly kind of decreasing. It's just not happening. So um, a four-hour chart, got to keep it certain moving average or it's going to go potty. And the thing is, really, I think people, uh, traders are getting a little bit fatigued because if you look right here, we had these candles by Sandflower. If we had a nice, good push off that certain moving average, well, once we, once we dump below it, but then, of course, we just gave it all back. So I think, really, um, you know, you can play any market, but really... Uh, like I say, Bitcoin, when it's healthy, it makes trading alts a little easier. Okay, that's just my take on it. Some alts make money every day no matter what. but Or they lose money and you're shorting them. But anyway, this this kind of action right here where you're riding such an yeah, an important moving average as like the uh, four-hour turn moving average when you're kind of ranging like this on it, that's just crappy because, you know, it could launch from here or dump from here. But I think, you know, holding on to it that long is just unusual. You can kind of see here where, you know, back in the day here, we uh, not too long ago, we, 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 were, we were kind of doing something the same. Uh, and as you can see, you know, everybody was watching at that time. And they were saying, OK, you know, we, we, we tested the 200 ones, got rejected, tried it again. OK, I, oh, now there we go. You know, so really. And of course, here we jumped right to it. We're under it. I mean, 
if you go back and look at the four hour chart, you know, when you visit the 200 moving average like this, you know, something is usually going to happen. As you can see, it's, it's, it's a pivotal moment when you start hitting it, you know, I mean, there was this thing here, which I think burned a lot of people out was this sideways ranging action, you know, but it did break above the student moving average, had a little bit of a pump, couldn't, couldn't quite make the 314, came down right to 200 and then bam, exploded. So right now, you know, you've got people are going, well, is this, is this sideways action here going to end up looking like this? You know, are we going to ride that thing for, you know, weeks and weeks, months and months, you know, uh, which is fine. You can make money there, but, uh, um, People make money no matter what. It's just that uh, sometimes it's a little bit more fun than other times. Let me actually grab this thing here. Can I grab that? Let me grab it. There you go. Yeah, because, you know, I don't think anybody really wants to do that again. You know, that's fine. If Bitcoin starts ranging strong like that, I mean, doing that kind of ranging, that that's fine too. But we'll have to, you know, do it for a day or two, figure out, okay, that's what, that's what the game is. And we'll just play it. Um, it just gets fatiguing if you're riding the 200 like we are right now. Um, like ranging sideways here uh, was no big deal. That's great. That's just wonderful. That's fine because you're about the 200. You're, it just makes all trading easier. Um, I like it. So anyway, I think we're seeing a little bit of hesitation in the market. One of the things that will make it, in my opinion, a little a little bearish is just people don't like to play when um, Bitcoin is in this range. They kind of want it to either break below, give it up, or, or, or pump, you know, and also you've got a lot of people who are going to um, be longing and shorting, uh, you know, based on this 200 moving average cross in the four hour chart, I do believe. And right now we ain't quite sure what it's going to do yet because, you know, you got a, a kind of a, a, a mix of indicators saying different stuff. So, but do note this, you know, on the uh, daily chart, or above the 200 or above the 314, we're kind of heading sideways. It's kind of nice. One of the things that I have noticed you know, mentioned before is that, uh, you know, we are ultimately, we did kind of on the way back up, we kind of got rejected there. As you can see, that was a previous high and um, we're having a hard time getting back above that. And that does make sense. But when we break that, um, then we're good to go. I mean, really, and I wouldn't, you know, if you, if you look at it on a daily perspective, you know, you do have ultimately you've got a, uh, you can go as a low and then you call it like a lower high. You can call that a high. You can call that a higher high. And so, you know, very likely we could see something like this. where Bitcoin eventually just goes like that, you know, and starts doing that kind of action on the daily. Certainly could see it. It's in the right place to start making that happen, you know. And then really if we start moving up like that, you know, really um, if we start moving up, uh, grab that ray again. Here's, I'm going to go right here. Bonk. I mean, how many, that's really our next big, you know, kind of like high, that previous high that might actually cause, you know, uh, a glass ceiling to have to get in beat, to, to, to get beat on until we break above it or get rejected by it. But really that would be like, you know, that's 30, that's 33% or so you could make before you get to that high. And where's that high? That high is like 31,000. And I mean, you know, anybody who can just sit back and ride that, especially if they got a couple X leverage, um, you know, they're going to be, they're going to be darn happy. So I think really, and then also true, you, you do have the S and P 500 in that weird situation where it's getting rejected, where it got rejected by the 314 moving average. Bitcoin didn't, uh, the S and P 500 might bounce into 200, might not. We don't quite know yet. Bitcoin's still going to hold inside sideways, holding strong sideways above these important moving averages. So, what in the world? And of course, the four hour chart is being, you know, a pain in the ass. And I think ultimately, if you look at the 45 minute chart, it is also a 45 minute chart. You know, Bitcoin is below the 200 moving average. Really, 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 you know, all trading is a thousand percent easier if we can get up here and start ranging above the 200 and the 314. Squeeze indicator would denote maybe we're getting ready to go there. Um, directional index, definitely. Uh, it's beginning to go in the right direction. ADX is climbing and that's cool. Um, but you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, really, I mean, are we going to get, you know, a, a, a move like this again? You know, are we going to get, you know, a move like this? And then hopefully it can break with that 314 and keep going. Um, I'm happy longing, longing or shorting, really, you know, prefer to long, you know, rather than short. But, uh, you know, this is tough because I'm not exactly sure, like looking at the 45 minute chart here, I really couldn't call a long or a short right now. I mean, we're, we're ultimately, uh, you could say that the, you know, on this time frame here that the directional index is kind of, you know, trending towards the downside. You could say ultimately that like volume ultimately is declining. 
and I don't really use the squeeze this way, but you could kind of say it's doing like this. But of course, the squeeze is a uh, you know it, it's it, it is more of an indicator like this. So I think really, uh, but the squeeze does tend to linger behind the uh, directional index, and the directional index does have some positive energons to it, at least even if it's still in the red. So we'll see what happens. You know, uh, really, we need we need it to either get into a, an attitude of where people can start shorting it and making money, or or longing it and making money. You know. Um, I think you just do, do, do play a role in things right now. And I mean, what do you do right now? Do you long or short? Even if, you, even if you're just doing spot, like what do you do right now? You know, it's it, it's a hard hard thing to be in, hard spot to be in for spot and uh, and um, uh, uh, derivatives. Looking at the hourly chart, the hourly chart kind of looks pretty strongly like we got a 200 moving average um, rejection right there and it's moving down from there. Squeeze indicator is kind of only getting started there. Um, this always tends to be pretty weak right here when the squeeze, you really want the squeeze indicator to be doing kind of moves more like, you know, more like this. You want nice swings like that. You want kind of a nice, you want something of consequence, you know, when it kind of does like anemic stuff like this, that's hard to play, you know? And once again, like on the hourly chart, you can look here. Oh, good. <laughs> like on the hourly chart, you can see where. Even even there, it's somewhat you know difficult because ultimately, I mean, yeah, this 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 to me, if I was to the hourly chart, this is way more of a you know a me. What am I doing today? Sorry, immediately uh, more of a bearish chart. So I won't belabor all this, but really, um, you know, uh, on the directional index. It, it's beginning to chill out. ADX is raising, but you only want ADX to be on the way up when your price action is going down. If they're aiming at each other, it's never a good day. So anyway, it's all about what's going to happen. You know, it's just this is a hard market to play. Also easier to trade when Bitcoin is at least going sideways above the 45 minute 200 and uh, 314 moving average, the hourly, and then also if you're above the four, that's really great. So um, if we can get that four hour to balance today, that'd be really great. Um, anyway. We'll see if it does, you know, kind of all eyes, I think, especially on their short time frames. We'll have to turn around first, most likely, of course. But um, really, if we lose this, uh, you know, this uh, four hour turn moving average, well, what does that mean? Does it mean something like this and we come back, you know, or is it going to be like a nice pump? You know, just don't know. Uh, anyway, I don't know about anybody else, but, you know, I'm fatigued. It, 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 it pisses me off. <laughs> so but here's the thing. Always some all making money. Um, this is a L versus USDT for our chart, as you can see. Beautiful upwards channel right here. Um, I mean, next to the cave here, the ATR cave to make it a little easier to see. And you can see beautiful, beautiful move up like that. I love that we keep seeing these um, candles by Sam, these purple candles, um, you know, stack up. I think that's really, really bullish. I like that, like what I'm seeing. Um, we kind of did recently lose a higher high, you know, this, this here is, you could almost say it like it's kind of call it like an equal high, which is not exactly the end of things. Um, but really, uh, it's, you know, if you take the, take the wicks out, um, after all, they're all, they are just wicks, kind of a horizontal line here, you know, bang, you can see we do, it's pretty darn close. It's not quite over yet, you know, so we're getting a nice series of lower lows. We've been getting, uh, you know, relatively higher highs for a while. Of course, you know, this, I mean, you certainly can get something like this that happened. Like, here you go, you know, at a higher high, this one didn't quite make it. Then, of course, we started to, you know, stack higher highs again, work our way back up. You know, um, these things don't have to be, you know, perfect. So anyway, um, really, ELF versus USDT. Um, you know, what I like about this on a four-hour chart, the squeeze indicator is beginning to go positive, directional index is positive, and, of course, the volume indicator here, volume uh, indicator here is definitely showing a beautiful um, uh, pump up in uh, volume recently. We're, we're continuing to get nice volume. I like that. Looking at a 45-minute chart on this one here. Um, you know, recently, yeah, broke above that to moving average. Um but of course, once again, it's it's a tough day because we had that run, but at least for initially right here, now it's kind of showing some signs of weakness. So I'm kind of watching this one here on the four hour and I'm like, well, you know what? You know, just don't know. I'm kind of thinking that maybe a play here for me at least is uh, 
you know, I think maybe I'm going to put you right there. So maybe this guy needs to uh, kind of, it's going to have to confirm for me a little bit tougher than a little bit better than that. I am just not sure the market is so flaccid right now um, that I'm going to just this guy here. I think I would like to see possibly, you know, another 200, this guy come down to the 45 minute 200 moving average and make a bounce with good indicators that, at that point. And I think definitely that maybe I'd be getting in on it, but really I'm not going to, if I'm going to actually uh, get in on this guy right here, I'm looking at the 45 minute chart and I'm going to let this thing come down and grab somewhere around here as a buy, probably a 200 moving average bounce or bottom of the channel bounce. But once I get that confirmed with good indicators, maybe um, L versus USDT be one that I would I would hop in. But right now it could turn around towards the upside, but right now it's starting to look a little weak. Even if the four hour chart looks kind of good, you know, I'm really not into uh, right now with the market as it sits, uh, just, just the kind of mood of the market. I'm really not into uh, buying anything that's going to do anything but go green after I buy it. You know, I want to buy it when it's hitting the green, get a trailing take profit. And I, that's, that's, that's my trust level right now. So there you go. Um, I ain't got no long-term plans. It's all short trades, you know what I mean? Or short-term trades. You know, get, get some green, trying to take profit, hop the crap out, you know. But if this guy did bought it, did bar, did visit the bottom of the channel, especially with its wicking nature, um, if you think about it, if I do like a forecast here, this guy could, you know, hit the bottom of this channel. And what if you got into that and it kind of rode to the top of the channel in some reasonable amount of time? That's, you know, 18%. Definitely, definitely, definitely could happen. So anyway, that's, that's what I think about that one. Um, ELF versus just the, also ELF versus BTC is being traded. You can play that on KuCoin and Binance and all. So if you got some BTC you want to trade, um, the chart looks remarkably the same. Honestly, a little better, um, I think. So uh, that's one to think about. You might even be seeing one of these, you know, for what it's worth. Um, you might be seeing a W for win win could happen so i'll just throw that one out there but um anyway that said let's move on to the next uh lun c definitely was an interesting uh play today this thing uh 45 minute chart broke to 21314 took off like a rocket ship uh i was at did a fib sequence to see if this thing would you know bounce at a uh at, 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 like, at like a a spot that we would expect and could work with, but really pretty much it's going beyond the seven, eight, six. It's pretty much given all those gains that it got back. Um, and now the directional index is um, in the red and squeeze indicators, you know, dump in volume is gone. So anyway, that one's out of here. So real quick, let's just fire up some ones that we saw today. GMT versus USDT. How's that one looking? You can put on Binance and KuCoin. Um, this one's kind of nice. I like what I'm seeing. Uh, I, th you know, uh, one of the things about it is you have a nice directional uh, uh, squeeze indicator is looking good. Directional index, as you can see, is kind of trending down. Volume's going down. This thing definitely made a strong break. Tested the 314. Uh, made, made a move. It's going sideways. Right now, it's just kind of my take on it. It's just going sideways. I don't really... Let's look at a four-hour chart. Four-hour chart, kind of looking nice. For our charts below the 200, I would just, you know, even I would just kind of step away from GMT. EOS versus USDT. How's that one looking? You can play it on Binance, KuCoin. You can play it a lot of nice places. Um, I like this one. This is in the right spot. So four-hour chart. Definitely ran hard. Came down. Nice, be beautiful 200, move, uh, 200 moving average bounce in the four-hour chart. Moving up. It's just right now. Um, challenging and probably getting over a, uh, a, recent, um, a recent high. So we'll see how it does there. Um, as you can see, it's kind of getting rejected there. But these indicators are just getting rolling. Um, this this could definitely be a play. Um, but so many things are doing exactly this move right here. This morning they had a run. Now they're kind of just sitting there sideways. So I'm not too excited. This would have been hot earlier this morning, getting off the student moving average. And if I was in it, I'd probably stay in it. But um, right now at kind of a zero profit play. If I hopped in it right now, I, I wait for this thing to actually show me something. Um, either get above this higher high, this previous high and keep moving or uh, retrace and bounce. Um, if we look at a 45 minute chart, how's that looking? Yeah, you can really see where this previous high is, is knocking it down. Um, Squeeze indicator would show maybe we're getting ready to move up, you know, um, direction next is trailing off, nice volume. Uh, you know what? Play at your own risk. EOS is not incredibly exciting. Frey versus um, USDT. 
uh, free, oh, Frax. Frax versus USDT, how's that one looking? Uh, this one's going on weird exchanges, but Polonex, Gate.io, okay. Um, oh. Um, no, <laughs> just forget that one. I don't even want to hear it. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. Whatever. Um, T versus USDT. That's on Binance, OKX, Kukun. Let's look at that one. At, uh, it's also it's on Binance. It's on Binance US. It's also on um, uh, KuCoin and Get.io and Mexi. So kind of cool. Let's look at it on, Ku, on KuCoin. Oh, I like this one. Okay, so this is nice. Um, it's slowly working its way up. I like this channel. Um, God, can you actually really sort of... Uh, Kind of get a, a, a channel roll in here. I guess you kind of could like that. And then it kind of burst out of the channel, came back down. Um, I like this one. This is nice. A lot of nice pushing. A lot, not nice. A lot of nice volume. Um, it's a forty-five inch. I bet a four-hour chart has a four-hour chart look. Yeah, I like that. Um, four hours kind of just getting started. Honestly, though, I'm going to tell you what. This one kind of excites me. And I like the different places you can play it. But what I'm going to do on this one, this one actually is exciting. I like it. I'm going to wait for this one to show me something. I really think we're going to see some sideways back to this channel and then move up. You know, it looks to me like we're going to see something like this, you know, and then a move up. Um, or that's just, that's just kind of what I'm seeing right now. So I'm going to watch this one because we also could get a play like, you know, I'm going to give it back and then bounce, you know. Um, it's, it, it's in the right place. And if we look at this one here, also very important. Um, uh, how is this one on the four hour? So the 200 on the 45 minute chart, it's above the um, 200 moving average on the four hour chart. It's, it's above the 200 moving average. How about the daily? It's the ultimate test daily. It is too. Okay. So T is definitely exciting. So today, um, today, uh, March 2nd, 1023 AM, you know, after this one runs a little bit further and I get a better idea of what it's going to do, uh, T versus USDT definitely interests me. I like that you can play it on a lot of exchanges. Um, that kind of excites me. I like that. Um, ELF, uh, it's a four-hour chart. Yeah, ELF versus USDT. Um, this one very well may start moving. Um, I think that, that could be a W for, you know, wind pattern. I'm going to watch. I don't like everything right now. is kind of like looking at the four-hour chart. We're seeing this action right here where it had a move, and now it's a red candle. It's about the 200 moving average. I like that. Um I'm just going to keep an eye on it, but I'm not going to do anything with it right now. Um, Bitcoin, once again, really, you know, if it loses this 200 moving average and really starts to uh, to move down, alts are going to get wrecked. Um, if it starts to move up, alts are going to move. So I really am kind of, I'm an impatient individual. I have no doubt. It's just that uh, really um, Bitcoin right now is weak and this is just not so cool. It's got it. You know, just if it stays this way, if it dumps the turn moving average and it, and it just starts to tumble, whatever. I, I'm just sorry. I'm a little bit all over the place today. It's just, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Right now, Bitcoin is just not in a friendly place right here to be, um, you know, looking to, for, to be playing uh, trades right now. Like all of this, like this would have been crappy. That would have been crappy. All this is crappy. This was okay. You know, then it's been harder to trade alts recently. So really, it needs to get back. Yeah. <laughs> or if it's going to just plummet or go sideways, we'll, we'll, we'll play it from there. But right now, because there'll be more stability, if it, if it goes down here below the moving average and starts to range sideways or slowly dump, we can play that too. But right now, it's just a very, very annoying place. Watch, watch your stops. Anyway, now with that said, let's look at some news real quick. Um, breaking, a Ukrainian terrorist attack is underway in Brinsk, uh, Br Bransk, Russia. The attackers said on video they wouldn't kill the, they would they wouldn't kill civilians, but there are reports of hostages and mass casualties. Uh, Putin has convened an emergency meeting of the Security Council. He has done that. This event does seem to be happening. I don't know why this guy is wearing a shower cap over his helmet, but anyway, I guess that's probably winter camo. Yeah, it is. Um, then look at this guy, geriatric patient. What's he going to do? You know. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is real or not. I mean, but, uh, you know, there's been a couple of these guys, another manifesto posted by attackers crossing the border, looking to stir up stuff. I've always wondered about, you know, uh, uh, 
uh, Slavic soldiers, maybe they like Russian or, or, or Ukrainian, whatever. How, a beard's always confused me. I was in the military and you, I mean, gas mask, bro, you're, you're dead if, if you get gassed. Um, and gas can sometimes just be, I can't breathe because breathe because crap is on fire. Um, this one guy got identified and he is a bad dude, or at least depending on who you're asking, but you know, he is legit a person. Um, he's a Russian born dude, not fighting for Ukraine. So anyway, he does seem to exist. Anyways, uh, Putin, unhappy, not too happy about this, you know, and uh, anyway, I, I do agree with uh, Bobart here, <laughs> a map showing the only place my taxes should go. Um, I would have to tell you, you know, I'm all about like, let, let them sort it out. Um, I think this move was crazy. And one thing is also watch the markets because um, it is interesting. I'm not sure what's going to come out of that our Russian Security Council uh, meeting Um if this is happening, uh, they Russia right now is firing on the average of like sixty thousand artillery shells a day. Um, what is it? What? No. What's the region? Oh gosh, I'm sorry, I forget. An important uh, city, uh, town, kind of just got taken by the Russians like yesterday and the day before. Um, a lot of desperation right now. A lot of false flags could happen um, by a lot of different interested parties might do this, do that. Like, like who recently blew up the uh, Nord Stream that we kind of think is pretty confirmed now, if you ask me. Um, anyway, if these guys do something a little bit heinous and it and uh, it does piss off the uh, uh, Mr. Putin here, um, expect, you know, frigging carnage and that could affect the market because definitely um they will be frigging clearing out Kiev one square kilometer at a time so with that said uh new cryptocurrency exchanges cannot be relied on as qualified custodians sec chair um guppy face here actually guppies are cute he's not the, um we need transparent audits now whatever that means but anyway um here's the thing uh what's this guy's name again who even cares this dude um you know what? I'm I'm kind of a, a, a you know what? I'm just going to be honest with you. I do judge people by appearances. Nobody this ridiculously ugly and strange looking is a good dude. So this news um, could be rocking the markets a bit today, causing uncertainty. Whenever this guy says something with his weird little claw, like bent up fingers, um, you know, you know, he kind of looks like an ahi tuna, big forehead. Anyway, weird dude. Sorry, but. Regardless of that, uh, the only man who, you know what, not quite yet. One more interesting news story. I like it. 3D printed fashion, 3D printed fashion collection turns heads at NFT Paris. Um, you know, I, I like it. Um, sure. You know, NFT uh, printed dresses. Imagine that, you know, it's like, it's like, it's, it's an NFT. It's a, it's clothes. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, I tell you what, you know, uh, if, if if there was an emergent uh, coin on this right now uh, that you could get into, I probably would would be looking at that chart because this is interesting. I like it. I like it. It's cool. So I'll take it. Anyway, guys, I'll put this in the live chat just in case anybody cares. It's kind of an interesting little article. So this was probably way too long and rambling, but regardless, the only man who never makes the mistakes is the man who never does anything. Most don't. You do. You're a crypto truth seeker. You're making the world a better place. If your Bitcoin's toast you own, punches a disgusting old globalist in the nuts just like this dude. And uh, that's a good reason to get out of bed in the morning. <clears throat> so take care, and I'll see you again tomorrow. All right.